Uh, in this uh, extremely short video, I'll try to explain or rather I'll do my best to explain how to create a, uh, an embedded Linux image with support for Qt. With Qt's uh, various different modules which are related to Qt. Hopefully you will find this useful as I was when I was trying to build such an image I was really struggling really where to change what and what kind of uh, what kind of uh, packages or modules to include so okay so uh, let's see if uh, let's get started and I'm sure it, it will be of some use to you so this is where my Yocto is installed it's in the OPT folder so I'll go into Poki so I have my own meta layer here called as meta PyClock. And in your case, it can be anything, whatever meta folder which you have created. So as far as the image goes, so I have folder called images. And this is my image, clock image or BB. So here in for, for this image to, if you want to create an image which supports Qt, so all you have to do is say, I'll scroll down here. So for example, I have created a group called as Qt5 dev packages in which I have included the entire list of the development packages which are related to Qt. For example, Qt3D, Qt charts, Qt connectivity, Qt location, Qt multimedia, Qt quick controls, Qt serial bus, Qt virtual keyboards, etc. So that's the thing and also something called as if you want to have support for qt5 web engine so again i have created a group for as qt5 web engine group in which i have included all the development related packages for qt webkit and uh, this is then added to the image underscore install variable so finally at the end of the file there is a variable called as image underscore install which has an entry for for the group which I have created above, all the Qt related group. Hopefully this should be very, should be useful if you want to have support for Qt, but this is not the only place where you want to make changes. There are other places as well. So this is in where you are, you are defining the image inside the image, image files definition. So this was inside that. Now let us look at other places where you need to make some small changes. So I'll close this file. And again, if I go to my meta folder, my own meta layer, and uh, so there is a folder called as uh, recipes QT. So if you go into that, so the way I have modified it. So for example, in the QT5 folder, I have, so if this is what I have removed. So if you don't want support for X11, for example, in which case, uh, basically in my case, I don't want the support for X11. Coffee Place, for example, was was an embedded Linux image with, with no X11 support. So there's a variable called as package config underscore remove. So this is where you add that. And uh, I wanted the support for EGLFS, which is added to the package config underscore append. So you can see, uh, this can be useful this line has to go there and another thing is Qt web engine so if you want to have support for Qt web engine make sure you create an append file for that as well and inside that inside the Qt web engine append file for package config I have defined it should support WebRTC proprietary codecs support for pulse audio as well as for pepper plugins for playing a different kind of multimedia found on the websites. So if you are building an, uh, if you are trying to build an embedded Linux image, uh, which should play all the various kinds of, uh, say uh, various kinds of MP4, MP3 or um, 3GP files or the, those kind of things, uh, this line needs to be there. Otherwise your Qt web engine uh, will not be able to, will not be able to play those files. So if I if you have seen my previous videos in which I am playing some videos through the YouTube, uh, so that is using the Qt Web Engine. But uh, if so, when I initially created uh, the image, 
this line was not there. I had not added the support for this. And hence I was not able to play those media. So this is how I solved that problem. So especially with this proprietary codecs packages. So that needs to go in into the package config line. Uh, this is one place and uh, other in QT for environment. Let's see, did I make any change here? So nothing was done here. Files. So this is the environment file in which you define whether uh, what is the height and width of your uh, touch screen. So if you are planning to use this embedded Linux image on a touch screen, you can just uh, or just define these variables. So I just, so I'm just, since I'm going to use EGLFS, so I've just defined it here. So you don't have to pass it on the command line each time. Otherwise you, uh, you'll have to invoke your applications, uh, your uh, Qt applications with the parameter platform EGLFS. But if you uh, define the variable here, it uh, there is no need to do that. So this is something which is each time you uh, basically run a Qt application, this Qt5 ENV will set the environment uh, which is needed for that application. This again is a very useful place to define your own variables which you want to use. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the, as far as the Qt support goes, uh, that should be it for Qt really. Uh, this was a very short video, which I wanted to explain what goes on behind, the, I mean, uh, what needs to go in if you want to build an image which contains supports for qt5 especially qt5 packages i hope you like this video i'll see you in the next video thank you very much cheers bye bye